Hello and welcome everybody to this Azure side of Cispresso. I'm joined here by Estera and uh, we're going to go on a journey through Spark. But first of all, Estera, please introduce yourself. Yeah. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Estera Kot. I work as a product manager on Synapse Spark team. We focus on big data processing on uh, in Azure and I'm particularly accountable for Spark Core. That means Spark runtimes and performance features. Okay, cool. So you're going to take us through a full journey of Spark. So what are we going to talk about? Yeah, I'm super excited to start kick off this series. At that point, we plan six episodes. Each one will cover a different part of Apache Spark. And let's see what is coming up. In our first episode, we'll talk about using Apache Spark on Azure in a different way. So we'll also focus and look at the Spark uh, architecture in a nutshell. The second episode, we'll explore, explore the Synapse runtime for Apache Spark. So we will be talking about how to run big data workloads on Azure using Synapse. The third episode will focus on adding and managing custom libraries, and here including the demo how to do that per specific language. In our fourth episode, we'll compare notebooks and Apache Spark job definitions. Why? Because we get many questions, confusion, confusions about that. So we'll discuss when to use each one. The fifth episode. Here we'll talk about transitioning from T-SQL to Spark SQL. We'll show and prove that Spark isn't just for Scala or Python programmers, it's also for SQL guys. And in our last episode, the, the final episode for this series, we'll give you an overview of Spark UI. We'll share tips of debugging your Spark application, just you can start to work with Synapse. And who knows, there might be a seventh. But for now, we're sticking with E6. Now, a quick question for you. What is actually this Apache Spark that we're talking about? In a nutshell, uh, that is an open source distributed computing engine that handles batch processing, streaming, machine learning, and also interactive queries. It really transforms the way how we process the data. So let's take a moment and compare two types of data processing to make it uh, clearer. So when we talk about sequential data processing, we are looking at tasks that run one after the other in a specific order. This can be slow and not so efficient, especially when we are dealing with tons of data. Why? Because we have to like wait for the previous task to start the, the next one. On the flip side, the concurrent data processing is about executing multiple tasks at the same time, which can speed up things quite a bit. And this approach, approach is super useful in big data processing where we can break data into smaller chunks and process them at the same time. Awesome. So that basically opens up a lot of possibilities, but now how can it actually help our customers and when should they be using this? Yeah, great question. So just to set up a context for, for providing the answer, answer for that. So Spark is a powerful tool, especially for two personas, data engineers and data scientists. For data scientists, Spark is a go-to tool for ETL, so extract, transform, load. It's awesome at processing massive amount of data, both structured and unstructured. With Spark, you can clean, transform, aggregate, and enrich your data, make it ready for further analysis or also reporting. The case number two, real-time data streaming. So imagine you're working with real-time data streams like data from IoT devices, social media feeds, or web logs. In this case, you can use Spark streaming, part of Apache Spark, and that would let you to process and analyze this data in real time just from the source. Another third example uh, used for using Spark for data engineers is building data pipelines. So here you can integrate data from all sorts of sources like database, APIs, flat files. You can make sure that all of data is consistent and correct. Plus Spark supports a bunch of data formats and different storage system. Now switching to the second persona, data scientist. So here, Spark has a built-in library called MRLib, which provides scalable machine learning algorithms for 
classification, regression, clustering, and recommendation. And like po some popular use cases are uh, natural language processing. So here you can use Spark to tackle tasks like sentiment analysis, topic modeling, and name entity recognition, or on large data sets like social media feeds. Another popular case uh, for ML in Spark is predictive analytics. So here Spark can help you to create and deploy predictive models for things like forecast sales, detecting fraud, or predicting equipment failures. And that is going hand with hand with log analytics. So here you can analyze and process, process and analyze large volumes of data, telemetry from servers, from user activities, just to identify patterns and diagnose issues and improve overall system performance. And that's it. That's Apache Spark. Awesome. That basically, because this is our first video where we're talking a bit about Spark and how does it work. Uh, and the next video, we'll have a treat for you. We'll talk about running Apache Spark on Azure and we'll show you six different ways, an easy one, moderate ones and hard ones. Now, if this was the first time you're visiting our channel and you liked the video, just give us a thumbs up. Um, if you have any further questions, just put them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this type of content. As always, from the Azure Sign of Espresso team, this is Stan and... Estera. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.